Good morning, my friends. And look, I've got my party hat on today. And I've got my sign, happy birthday. Today is Jake's birthday. So let's sing. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jake. Happy birthday to you. <clears throat> Happy birthday. Happy birthday. We love you. Happy birthday. And may all your dreams come true. When you blow out the candle, one light stays aglow. It's the love within your heart, wherever you go. And it's true. You're so full of love, love in your heart. What a beautiful way to be in life. Look at that sun shining in today. This is one of my favorite kind of days. The weather is about 20 degrees Celsius, so it's sunny, the sky is blue, and it's just perfect weather for going outside and doing whatever you love to do outside. I think today I'm probably gonna get my kayak out on the water because it's such a gorgeous day. Well, instead of starting with music, I want to start with something new. It's a new word list. If you are a student who can type in your journal, I want you to put the video on pause and I want you to type these words. I'm going to try to put it in a position where you could see it. Type these words into your journal because this is your June list words. You can either pause the video and put them in your journal or you could go through them with me together. June list words and the first one for the new month of June is the World Ocean Day. How exciting. We can talk all about oceans. World Ocean Day is June 8. Canada, in the month of June, I'm just going to be talking about interesting facts about Canada. <clears throat> Virtual field trips. In the month of June, we typically go on a lot of field trips with our class. But because we're now at home, Mr. B is going to take us on a variety of virtual field trips. Life skills. Look at, here's the basket of sorting clothes, colors and whites. During the month of June, we're gonna to continue to talk about life skill activities that you can do by yourself at your house without an adult or a brother or sister having to really, really supervise you. Things that I think you can do. Father's Day is coming up Sunday, June 20th. A special day to honor your father for all the wonderful things he does for you. Sunday, June 20th is also the first day of summer so I put a picture of a beach because I know a lot of you love going to the beach. I see the umbrella and some fun activities. In June, we're going to honor National Indigenous Peoples Day, which is on Monday, June 21. And throughout the month, we're going to talk about special things about the Indigenous people of Canada. The Métis, the Inuit, and the First Nation. Tokyo Olympics. Here's the symbol for the Tokyo Olympics. They were supposed to be held last summer in 2020, but because of the pandemic, we're having it this summer 
Olympics to watch on television or listen to all the activities they're doing and the sports. And hopefully if Canada is participating, hopefully Canada will do well at the Olympics. Birthdays. Well, we had one birthday this morning for Jake, but also any birthdays that come up through the summer, we will honor them in June. Indigenous artists, I think it would be lovely if we tried to replicate. Replicate means to do the same. To try to create our own pictures similar to these types of Indigenous artists. And I'd love to study this month in June some Canadian artists. We have a special group of Canadian artists called the Group of Seven and we can explore some of their beautiful pictures. A lot of their pictures, a lot of their pictures are of nature, and that, of course, is my favorite. Here's a beautiful, you can see the flag of Canada, the red and the red maple leaf, but you can also see the indigenous symbols for the indigenous flag. I'd like to begin by acknowledging that the land that we are hosted on this morning is the Mississauga of the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Wendat. And here where I live at Lake Simcoe, I walk the sacred land of the Ojibwe and the Chippewa. We would also like to recognize the enduring presence of all First Nation, Métis, and Inuit peoples. And in fact, those are the three indigenous groups for Canada. First Nation, the Métis, and the Inuit. And I may have told you this before, Miss Coulterman loves to go kayaking. And a kayak was created by the Inuit people of the far north. So many great inventions came from the Indigenous people of Canada. The more we get together, 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 the more we get together, the happier we'll be. Your friends are my friends, my friends are your friends. The more we get together, the happier we'll be. There's Jake, the birthday boy, and Sophia. There's Vanny and Angela, the more we get together, the happier we'll be. There's Perdee and so Sandy and Ashraf and Ken. The more we get together, the happier we'll be. It's true, just kind of hanging out together and or going to our virtual school in the afternoons together, that time that we spend together, even if it's on screen, it's so beautiful to hang out with all of you. The more we get together, the happier we'll be. It certainly makes me feel better when I'm around you. So because of that, I'm gonna first sing thank you. Thank you for this day, students, thank you for day. <clears throat> thank you for this day, students. Thank you for this day. This beautiful, wonderful, glorious day. This beautiful, wonderful, glorious day. So it is indeed a glorious day today. Let the sun shine in. Face it with a grin. Smilers never lose, and frowners never win. So let the sun shine in, face it with a grin. Open up your heart and let the sun shine in. Here comes the sun, do 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 do. Here comes the sun, and I say. It's all right, do 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 do. Weave, weave, weave me the sunshine. 
shine out of the falling rain. Weave me the hope of a new tomorrow. Fill my cup again. Weave, weave, weave. During the month of May, we did all sorts of weaving. And I'd love to see you continue to do that through the summer. Practice doing your weaving. Weave with paper or material or wool or string or gimp. That plastic gimp that we use at camp all the time. Happiness runs in a circular motion. Happiness runs in a circular way. Happiness runs in a circular motion. Happiness runs in a circular way. La 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 Try that. La 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 It's the la, la sound that you make at the front of your mouth. Let's try our O. Oh. Farmer Brown, he had a dog and Bingo was his name. O oh. B I N G O. B I N G O. B I N G O. And Bingo was his name. Now, I'm going to work on a song where we can do some lip closure like this. Mm. We're just going to hum a song. I'm just trying to work on your lip closure, holding your lips tight. Because when you are cooking or when you're around other people, it's not polite to spit on them or to drool on them. So the more you work on closing your lips tight, mm, let's practice it one more time. Close your lips tight. Good for you. <clears throat> so that's holding your lips closed. And now we're going to work on the ba ba. Ba 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 sound. Ba 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 ba. <laughs> Working on the ba. Let's work on the s s sound. Is at the front of your mouth. S. It's almost through your teeth, isn't it? S s s. Like a snake. A sailor went to c c c. To see what he could see, see, see. And all that he could see, see, see. Was the bottom of the deep blue sea, see, see. That's a good practice for the letter S. I'm going to go a little bit faster. Let's do it. A sailor went to see, see, see. To see what he could see, see, see. And all that he could see, see, see. Was the bottom of the deep blue C C C
Good for you. Let's get your body moving. Start with clapping. Ole, 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 ole. Ole, ole. Ole, 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 ole. Ole, ole. Stretch it out. Ole, 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 ole. Keep going. Ole, ole. Olay, 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 stretch it up, olay, 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 whoo! Let's do some rolling. Ole, 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 ole. Ole, ole. Ole, 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 ole. Ole, ole. I'm in the mood for snapping. Hey, how about you? I'm in the mood for snapping. Hey, how about you? I'm in the mood for snapping. Snapping along with you. Snap, snap, what do you say? I'm in the mood for that today. Snap, snap, what do you say? I'm in the mood for that. This time I want you to wave your arms. I'm in the mood for waving. Hey, how about you? I'm in the mood for waving. Hey, how about you? I'm in the mood for waving, waving along with you. Hey, hey, what do you say? I'm in the mood for that today. Hey, hey, what do you say? I'm in the mood for that. I'm in the mood for stretching. Hey, how about you? I'm in the mood for stretching. Hey, how about you? I'm in the mood for stretching, stretching along with you. Hey, hey, what do you say? I'm in the mood for that today. Hey, hey, what do you say? I'm in the mood for that. Ooh, that loosens up your shoulders a little bit. Take a sip of your water. <clears throat> oh, that, that tastes good. Every day, my friends, lots of water. If you're going outside, take your water bottle with you. Even when you're in the house, I carry this water bottle all around the house with me. You don't really need fruit juices or soda pop. You don't even really need those energy drinks like Gatorade or whatever. Really, water is your best drink. It will really keep your body hydrated. Talking about water. Listen to the water, listen to the water rolling down the river. Listen to the water, listen to the water rolling down the river. Boat goes down the river. It takes me to my home. The boat goes down the river. It takes me to my home. <clears throat> well, one of the things we're going to talk about in June, World Ocean Day. I've been trying to think of songs about the ocean. Unfortunately, I don't know that many, but I do know my Bonnie lies over the ocean. So for this one, every time you hear the letter B, this time we're going to stretch our arms out. My Bonnie lies over the ocean. My Bonnie lies over the sea. My Bonnie lies over the ocean. So bring back my Bonnie to me. Bring back, bring back, bring back my Bonnie to me, to me. Bring back, bring back, bring back 
my body to me. This time we're going to stretch up every time you hear the letter B. And I'm going to go a little bit faster, my friends. My body lies over the ocean. My body lies over the sea. My body lies over the ocean. So bring back my body to me. Bring back, bring back, bring back my body to me, to me. Bring back, bring back, bring back my body to me. Good for you. Give yourself a pat on the back. Also during the month of June, I want to talk about Canada as much as possible. And I want to think about some Canadian songs. And there's a song that comes from the east coast of Canada. It's from Newfoundland. And Newfoundland is the most east part of Canada. And um, they, many people in Newfoundland speak with a little bit of an accent. So in this particular song, I'm going to sing with an accent. I'm going to try to do it like a Newfoundland accent. And the song, I've mentioned to you before that lots of people on the East Coast and on the West Coast, but particularly down on the East Coast, are fishers. They go out in their boat every day, fishing, crabbing, bringing in lobster, working hard out on the boat. So this song is about, I am the boy who builds the boat, and I'm the boy who that sails her. I'm the boy that catches the fish and takes them home to Liza. Hip your partner Sally to bow. Hip your partner Sally Brown. And Fogo Twillingate, Morton's Harbor. That's down in the East Coast. It's in Newfoundland. All around the circle. I'm going to try my best. It's a little bit different. It's not quite as clear as that. It's like this. I wonder if I should use the tambourine. Eyes the bye that builds the boat, and eyes the bye that sails her. Eyes the bye, the boy, who catches the fish and takes them home to lies her. Hip your partner, Sally Tippo. Hip your partner, Sally Brown. Vogel, Twillingate, Morton's Harbor, all around the circle. Now I'm going to try it with tapping my legs. Eyes the bye who builds the boat. I'm the boy who builds the boat. I is the bye that builds the boat and I is the bye that sails her. I is the bye that catches the fish and takes them home to lies her. Hip your partner Sally to bow and hip your partner Sally Brown. Vogel twilling Cape Morton's Harbor all around the circle. And now I'm going to try to speed it up a little bit. Clap along with me. Eyes the bye that builds the boat, and eyes the bye that sails her. Eyes the bye that catches the fish and takes them home to lies her. Hip your partner, Sally to bow. Hip your partner, Sally Brown. Bogo Twilly Cape Morton's Harbor all around the circle. Yeah, that's a, that's a really neat song from Newfoundland. So every day I'll try to do a different song from somewhere in Canada. This land is your land. This land is my land, from Bona Vista to Vancouver Island, from the Arctic Circle to the Great Lake Waters. This land was made for you and me. In fact, I was just talking about the Arctic Circle, and the Arctic Circle is where a polar, the North um, the North Pole is, the Arctic Circle, the Arctic Ocean, is way up at the North Pole. We have a North Pole and we have a South Pole. And at the North Pole and the South Pole, um, it's one of the habitats that animals live in. I think I've mentioned there are six in particular habitats. We'll talk about them through June. And one is a polar habitat. So way, way up north in Canada, we have the North Pole. And that's where you get to see beautiful animals like this white polar bear. 
most of the polar, the North Pole is all icy and snowy. Look at that. So the polar bear is white so it can camouflage with the snow. It's a very strong animal, a polar bear. This is something else you might see at the polar cap or the polar habitat. A walrus or a seal. Look at those interesting animals. A walrus has those big tusks that come out of their mouth. Oh, look at this is so cute. This is called the Arctic hare. Little white hair. It's so pretty. It's white because it camouflages so nicely in that polar ice cap. Oh, here's something lives way up north. It also lives in the polar cap. It's a caribou. And you might say to yourself, wow, it looks like a reindeer. It looks like a deer. You're right. This is a caribou. And a caribou is on our Canadian quarter, our money. See this quarter with the, it looks like a moose, but it's not a moose. It's a caribou. So you'll find caribou way up at the polar cap at the polar habitat. Oh, here's an Arctic wolf. This kind of wolf lives way up at the Arctic. And even this wolf is quite light colored. I see the white, very light colors because typically a wolf that you would see in the forest or in the woods is a dark color so that it could camouflage in the woods. But this is a light color one to camouflage with the ice and snow. Oh, here's something really cute. An Arctic whale. Look at how beautiful that whale is. And a whale uses its tail to flap and move the whale out of the water. Oh, here's something really cute. These are puffin birds. Puffins. Aren't they cute? With their puffy cheeks, bright orange webbed feet, large brightly colored bill. They are hard to miss, it says. And they're found in Arctic Sea and they're also found in the northern Pacific Ocean on the what excuse me on the west coast of Canada. Here's some other arctic birds. Beautiful. I forgot to mention something really important about this book. All of these paintings are painted by a famous Canadian artist named Robert Bateman. And he is, his art is so beautiful because it's so real. It looks like you're taking a photograph. That's how beautiful his painting is. So proud of his artwork in Canada. These are called snow geese. We definitely have Canadian geese that you've seen in Canada. These ones are called snow geese. Here's a good picture of all the snow. Must be cold there. Snow and ice. Aww. Now on the South Pole, the South Pole, you find Penguins. Such a pretty animal. Oh, look at these are so cute. Looks like they like to line up 
just like we like to line up at school. First, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. This painting by Robert Bateman is so real looking. It almost looks like a photograph, doesn't it? And let's see the last page. Albatross. Oh, interesting. It's a very old animal. This animal lives at the Antarctica, and it's called an albatross. Look at the long bill, the long beak. So that's part of the polar world, the polar habitat for animals. I've been working on the railroad all the live long day. I've been working on the railroad just to pass the time away. Can't you hear the whistle blowing? Rise up so early in the morning. Can't you hear the captain calling? Dinah, blow your horn. Dinah, won't you blow? Dinah, won't you blow? Dinah, won't you blow your horn? Dinah, won't you blow? Dinah, won't you blow? Dinah, won't you blow your horn? Someone's in the kitchen with Dinah. Someone's in the kitchen, I know, ho, ho, ho. Someone's in the kitchen with Dinah, playing on the old banjo. They're playing fee, fi, fiddly, I, o. Fee, fi, fiddly, I, o, 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 o. Fee, fi, fiddly, I, o. Playing on the old banjo, working on that o sound. It isn't any trouble, just to S-M-I-L-E. It isn't any trouble, just to S-M-I-L-E. So if you're feeling troubled, it'll vanish like a bubble. If you only take the trouble, just to S-M-I-L-E. Smile, my friends. Um, I want to show you something. Yesterday, Miss Betty was showing you things in the forest as she was doing a walk through the forest. And it reminded me of this book that I have that is of different sounds of birds. And I hope you'll be able to hear these sounds. I'm going to bring it up close to the microphone. This is the sound of a cuckoo bird. Cuckoo. Cool. This is the sound that a great teat makes. Here's the color of it. I've never Can you hear that bird? I've never seen that kind of bird. This is the sound of a magpie. Great. Sometimes I hear these different sounds in the forest and I, I don't actually know what kind of bird it is, but I'll learn them. Here's a beautiful nightingale. Beautiful. This one I'm more familiar with because I see blackbirds all the time where I live. They're always out in the farmer's fields near my house. I hope you can hear that. Beautiful. So that's the sound of a few birds. That's kind of cool. One two, buckle my shoe, three, four, shut the door, five, six, pick up sticks, seven, eight, 
lay them straight. Nine, ten, a big fat hen, a chicken. Bawk, 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 bawk. Good for you. I think I sing this song every day because it's one of my favorites. Red and yellow and pink and green, purple and orange and blue. I can sing a rainbow, sing a rainbow, sing a rainbow tune. Yeah, it's one of my favorite songs. Well, my friends, I think I'm going to get busy on some work with you. A few activities of work. <clears throat> All things on earth shall pass under the sky, but music alone shall live. Music alone shall live. Music alone shall live and never die. Music is so beautiful. Music is so healing when you're not feeling well also. It's just wonderful to listen to music, to calm down to music, to dance to music, to sing or to hum or to play an instrument. Throughout the summer, my friends, continue to have music as part of your life. Let's do some breathing together. We're gonna to start with the star. Breathe it in, out, in, out, in, out, in, The square. Breathe it in. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. And blow it out. Let's breathe like the triangle. Breathe it in. Hold it. Let's breathe like this. I call it a lazy eight. It's an infinity side sign. So you breathe it in and out. Breathe it in and out. Breathe it in and out. Good for you. Here's the sequence for the days of the week. There's the sequence, seven days in a row. That's the order. Today we're going to do a new days of the week song, and it's to the tune of the Adams Family. Days of the week, days of the week, days of the week, days of the week, days of the week. There's Sunday and there's Monday. There's Tuesday and there's Wednesday, there's Thursday and there's Friday, and then there's Saturday, days of the week, days of the week, days of the week, days of the week, days of the week. Today is Tuesday, good for you. So if today is two, whoops, there goes my Wednesday. I gave it away. If today is Tuesday, tomorrow will be Wednesday. And when we're at school together, we typically cook on a Wednesday. That's our cooking day, isn't it? And yesterday was mm, Monday. Good for you. So today is Tuesday, and now we have a new month. May is finished, and now it's June. 
June is actually one of my favorite months of the year because you get to have long, long days. The sun is still out sometimes till 9 o'clock, 9.30, sometimes as late as 10 p.m. And you get to be outside and go for a hike or a walk. You get to be, I get to go out on my kayak at nighttime or I get to sit outside and read till late at night on my deck. It's just um, a wonderful month because you have nice long days. So let's sing the months of the year. January, February, March, and April, May, June, July, and August, September, October, November, December. These are the months of the year. There's 12 just like a dozen, just like a dozen eggs, or a dozen bagels, or a dozen donuts. Twelve is a dozen. And today is number one. Or in ordinal numbers, it's the first. Monday, June 1st, 2021. So let's have a look at some of the things I brought out for you to work on at your house. Because I don't think you have a lot of homework sheets left, but you can create your own homework. And I'm gonna show you what I mean. I have a whole jar of coins at my house. And I think it would be great if you spent more time working with coins. You might recall, these are the coins that we have in Canada. I'm gonna roll that back so you can see them a little bit better. A toonie, worth $2. A loonie, worth $1. A quarter, worth 25 cents. A dime, worth 10 cents. And a nickel, worth five cents. And the beautiful thing about Canadian coins is, other than the dime, the dime has um, the Blue Nose boat on it from Nova Scotia, from the east coast of Canada. But these other coins all have animals, Canadian, famous Canadian animals. For example, the polar bear from way up north, the loony, the loon is a beautiful bird in Canada. We hear it often on the lakes around Ontario. A caribou on the quarter. The blue nose bird, I was telling you, is on a um, boat, is on the dime. And a beaver is on the Canadian nickel. So with your coins at home, and I'm sure somewhere in your house, perhaps someone has these Canadian coins. I think each of you have one of these charts. It might be in with your homework file. And you can match. Match the loony. Match the toony. Oops, I did that incorrectly. The toony is first. The loony. There we go. Match a quarter. Match a dime. And match a nickel. So that's the first step is to practice matching. The second step that you could do at your house, you don't even need anyone to help you. I know you can do it on your own. Take some kind of a sorting. I use these egg cartons because they happen to be free and I don't have to recycle them. And use it to sort your coins. Put all your toonies together, all your loonies, all your dimes, quarters, nickels, and keep sorting, my friends. A quarter, a dime, a toonie, a loonie, a nickel, and keep sorting, keep sorting them. Just like we sort the money in our class at school, you can continue doing it at home, okay, friends? I think that's a good activity for you. 
And throughout the month of June, we'll start to talk a little bit more about each of these coins. So that's one activity you can do at your house. Here's another activity that I think would be a lot of fun. I think most of you have Uno cards. Uno, we play with these cards often at school. During the summer, I think it'd be great for you to be playing card games like Uno, where you're trying to get rid of the cards that are in your hand by playing them out. But another thing that I think you could do all by yourself is you could sort the Uno cards yourself. For example, you could put all the red cards together. You could put all the yellow cards together. You could put all the green cards together. And you could put all the blue cards in a pile. So there's four colors in this deck. Three of them are the primary colors. You might recall this. Three primary colors. Red, yellow, and blue. And all other colors are made from these three primary colors. Let me show you that color chart again. All of these colors, all other colors, are created just by mixing the three primary colors. If you mix them together in certain combinations, red and yellow makes orange, yellow blue makes green, blue and red makes purple. So you can sort your UNO cards by color, or you can sort your UNO cards by the number. You could put all the number threes together. You could put all the number fours together in a pile. So you could sort by color, you could sort by number. The other interesting thing about the UNO cards is you could sort them by sequencing. One, what's the order that they go in? Sequencing, one, two, three, four, five, okay? You could put them in a sequence, an order. So those are some fun things you could just do on your own that would be fun. You could also make a memory game, a concentration game, a memory game, where you put the cards face down on a table and then you pick one up and you try to match it with the same type. You try to remember where it is on the table and you match it. We play that one often at school. That way you might need assistance with someone else to help set it up with you. But I think it's a great idea, trying to find two that match. So UNO cards, big part of your summer, my friends. Now, yesterday I told you a little bit about another painter. I'm just finishing up our famous painters. I taught you a little bit about Claude Monet. He's a French painter from a long time ago, and he did what was called Impressionist paintings. He was one of the first painters who went outside to paint. And whatever he saw in nature, he painted it. He would paint the same painting. He might try painting it in the morning. He might try painting it in the afternoon or the evening. And he would show you what that painting looked like at different times of the day. So that's Claude Monet. I don't know where I put his picture. Um, but what's interesting is he created a new type of painting called an Impressionist. And I think, first of all, every single day, I think it would be terrific if you painted with watercolor. And these are watercolor kits. They're really cheap from the dollar store. They're not even expensive, my friends, okay? 
But every day, it's fun to paint with watercolor. And it's fun to practice mixing colors together. Mix yellow and red and see if you can find an orange in it. Mix yellow and green, I mean yellow and blue, and create a green color. So when I personally am making a painting of a scene that I'm thinking about, I like to paint back and forth, back and forth on my paper. Instead of painting in one spot around and around, I go back and forth. So I've got sand, I've got the ocean, and I've got the sunset. And today, so this is the background of my Monet picture. And now I'm gonna paint a boat. I'd like to put a sailboat on my painting. So I've got my watercolor paints and I've got my brush in water. And I think the first thing I want to do is wet, make my brown paint wet. Continue to dip my brush in the brown paint. And that brown paint is going to make, I'm going to try to make my sailboat on the water. One moment and I'll show you what I'm painting here. There. This part is the sailboat. It's hard to lift it up because the watercolor wants to drip. So first I did, first I did the sailboat. Then in black, black, I'm going to make a long stick that is called the mast of the sailboat. The mast. It's like a, it's like the, a pole that holds up the sails. And then I think I'm going to choose something quite colorful like purple. I think I'd like to do purple for my sailboat. So I dip my paintbrush in my purple. I wet the brush, because with watercolor, you keep wetting your brush. And I'm going to make a triangle. There we go. I'm making a big triangle for my sailboat. A sailboat can have several sails, but on mine, I'm going to put two. I'm gonna make one big sail, and then on the other side, over here, I think I'll make a smaller sail. Now, I just discovered that my Water, my purple watercolor is a really pretty purple right now. So I think I'm actually going to go back to my paint and I'm going to go over. Oh, yeah, I'm going to go over the first sail that I did to make it look darker. Actually, I'm going to level that up two triangles to make my sails. And there, I've got my sailboat that is sailing on the ocean. You can make whatever you want, my friends. Whatever you want. Whatever you love to paint. It doesn't have to be the same as anyone else's painting. It can be ever whatever you want to paint. But every day... Enjoy painting with watercolor. Now, in my sensory box today, my 
rectangle box. I've got something really soft, 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 soft. Something we often use in a bathroom, for example. Women use it for cleaning their makeup. It's little cotton balls. Sometimes we put them in our ears if we have a sore ear. But they're fun to play with too. We have bins of them at school because it's fun to make things with them. They're soft. So you can practice squishing. Squish, squish. And every day I think you should be practicing squishing things. And yet they're so soft. They're just so tender to your hands. And I like the feel of something soft. Of course you could use them once again. You can use them for counting. Maybe count by twos this time. For example, skip counting by twos. Put two in. Two. Two more. Four. Six. There's two more. Eight. They're all sticky together. Ten. Twelve. And here we go. Fourteen. Sixteen. Eighteen. Twenty. Two more. Here we go. Twenty-two. Oops. One fell out. And 24. That's counting, skip counting by twos. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. Skip counting by twos. You can also use the cotton balls for creating your own sorting. For example, I'm going to put number four here. And number six. You can put four, one, two, three, four cotton balls over here. Then my plus sign and add six cotton balls over here. One, two, three, four, five, six. They make great counters. So then I've got four plus six, and I'm going to add them all together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Four plus six equals ten. And I'd love you to practice some of these addition questions yourself. Maybe mom or dad can help to create some of these equations and you can practice using some cotton balls, some rocks, some stickers, the bingo dabber, anything you can use to add these numbers together. Maybe you could do about 10 addition questions. Now something I forgot to mention yesterday during the month of May, I was showing you different things that we use in a kitchen. And I think it's important that during the summer, all of you get busy in the kitchen. Get busy cooking, making your own lunch, making your own meal or helping with the meal. And here's a few of the things I was showing you. I want to refresh our memories. If you're making a recipe with liquids, and liquids are things like oil, water, lemon juice, orange juice, always use a glass measuring. This is called a liquid measuring unit. And then I'm gonna show you, if you're measuring dry things for your recipe, like flour, sugar, baking soda, baking powder. You would often use this dry measuring cup for dry things, okay? There's a difference between those two. A wet measuring cup 
and a dry measuring cup. Here's something I use, I guess, almost every day. Well, a whisk. A whisk is a handy tool in the kitchen for mixing eggs, for mixing liquid. If I'm making a sauce for something I'm cooking, if I'm making my own sauce, I'll mix it with a whisk. It's great for eggs and it's great for liquid things. It's not great if you're mixing a cake mix or a cookie mix because that gets too hard to stir. For that, you need a normal spoon. Here's something else. All summer, my friends, I want you to be peeling vegetables or fruits, whatever, but particularly vegetables. Peel a carrot down, down, down or peel a potato down, down. We do a lot of peeling in our class. Maybe peel a cucumber. We, there's all sorts of vegetables that you can practice peeling. Just remember to just go down the vegetable and not back up again, or you'll hurt your hand. A vegetable masher. Mash, mash, mash your potatoes, your squash, sweet potatoes, cauliflower, whatever your family like to mash. Everyone seems to love mashed potatoes. This is a great job for you, for your muscles. I think these are all tasks that I know you can do. Using tongs. I think this is great practice for all of you and it's great because you might be someday you might be going to a, a buffet restaurant where you practice using the tongs to put your food on your plate. Or it's great if you're working somewhere where you're going to be serving someone. So practice using tongs for lifting food. Here's one of my favorite kitchen utensils, a scraper. I'm sure it goes by a different name, but I just call it a scraper. I use it to scrape the bowl when I'm making something like a cake or cookies. If you scrape the bowl when you're finished, you'll get a lot more out of it. You're not wasting food then. This little measuring spoon is for measuring small amounts of something. Like if your recipe just asked for a tablespoon of salt, you could just fill up this, or a tablespoon of vanilla, or a tablespoon of margarine or butter. Something small, a small unit would go in this measuring spoon. A bigger unit would go in the liquid measuring cup or the dry measuring cup. Here's something else that I think you should get really good at this summer. Pouring. Pour from a measuring cup, pouring water from a jug and practice pouring it into cups or practice pouring liquid through a funnel and into a jar or into a cup, into something else. Practice lots of pouring. It's good for your exercise and for your hands, and it's also good for your eye-hand coordination. You have to watch closely what you're pouring so you don't spill it. So those are some more things that I want you to practice doing during the summer. And throughout the month of June, I'd like to look at some Canadian books. This one's called Canadian Animals, ABC. I see a moose and I see a goose, a moose and a goose, rhyming words. Here's the Arctic fox. I talked about the animals of the Arctic are white, they're camouflage white, so they can hide in the snow and ice. A 
is for Arctic Fox. B is for a beaver that lives in the wetlands of Canada and a bison. This big animal lives on the Western Plains most of the time. A bison. C is for a caribou or a calf. A baby caribou is a calf. Letter D is for dragonflies. And I love dragonflies because they eat mosquitoes. E, letter E is for an eagle or an eaglet, a baby eagle. F is for a frog. And G is a Canadian goose. H is for a hare. Hop, hop, hop. And I, letter I, is for an ivory gull. These birds fly near the ocean, an ivory gull. J is for a jellyfish. Even though they look cute in the water, if they sting you, if you're in the ocean and they bite you, it hurts. K is for a killer whale. If you go to the east or the west coast of Canada, you can go out on a boat. Often you can go out on a whale watching boat just to see the whales way out in the water. L is for a loon. Beautiful sound of a loon on the lake. It's lovely. I love it. M is for a moose. And look at how big a moose is. N, look at this animal. This is called a narwhal. And it's native to the far north of Canada, a narwhal. That's interesting, eh? O is for an otter. And there's two types of otters, actually. There's otters that live in lakes and streams and rivers, and then there's sea otters. Sea otter or an ocean otter. P, powerful, playful, polar bear that lives way up north. Q is a quail. This bird is called a quail. Here we go. You guys know this animal. R is for raccoon. S is for skunk. P U. T is for a turtle, or a tortoise, or a toad, or a trout. Delicious fish, trout. B, oh, I'm sorry, U, I should say, U, is for the U in the middle of the word walrus, or beluga, a beluga whale. Letter U is in the middle of those words. V is for vultures. I see lots of vultures flying around near my house and they swoop down to eat little mice or birds or other little things from the ground. W is for wolf. Interesting looking animal. This is called a muskox. A muskox. 
And this is a lynx. It almost looks like a little tiger or a lion. It's part of the cat family. It's a, it's a, it's native. It's in Canada called a lynx. Y is for a yellow throat bird. Yellow legs or a yellow jacket. This yellow jacket wasp. Yikes. And let's see. Z is for, in the middle of the word, grizzly, for a grizzly bear. These are all animals that you see in Canada. And one thing I've noticed is a lot of artists in Canada love to paint pictures of all those beautiful animals you saw. So throughout June, we'll try to look at some of those different animals. Have a great birthday today, Jake. Friends, I will remember you. Think of you. Play with you. And when another day is through, I'll still be friends with you. Go and enjoy this beautiful day and create joy, my friends.